Hello and welcome to Relevate. Today I'm going to show you how to add products and price books into Salesforce. So here I am, I'm in a test account. I'm going to go up to the waffle icon and I'm going to type in products. So I'm going to select products there. Now I've got a list of all these products here. I've added Microsoft Exchange license, but I want to add one more. So there's Business Basic, but I want to add Business Standard. Now I'm just going to go over to New and I'm going to type in my product name. So I want to keep it similar to what I had before. Four. So MS, and I can see over here in the shaded area what that was. I've got MS365 and it is business standard. And that's going to be for a user license product family. I'm going to associate that with the software product family. So you do that by going to the product object and creating a new pick list field for the product family. That helps you to run reports later by product family. So you can see how much you've made in different work areas within your business. I'm going to activate that so that that is available to be selected. I am going to say that it's a recurring product. That's a custom field that I've put on here and the product currency. Now you'll notice that if you've got multi-currency selected, that that is your base currency that you're selecting it in. This is where, where our cost center is, so that's fine. And then I'm gonna put in a description to allow me to understand just a little bit more. I'm just going to save that one. So you may have noticed that there was nowhere to actually put a price. That's because what we need to do is associate a price book. Now, as standard, the layout option has a little thing here which says related. But what I've done is I've pulled that out here. So you can change that by going to the settings icon and then edit page and then drag that out as a separate icon. But what that allows me to do is just add it to a standard price book. So I'm going to do that. Now, the standard price book, everything needs to be added to the standard price book. And what I've done is my standard price book is not active. So no one can actually select that. So if you're going to have multiple currency, you need to have all currencies stored in the standard price book. So if you're going to add Microsoft 365, you need to put it in Australian dollars and in US dollars or Canadian or you know pounds or, or whatever it is. And then when you create a country based or a currency based price book, you can then add it to that one as well. So I'll show you how to do that. So here we've got the price book. So we've got the product product price book and then the list price. So that's this one. Now I've got it here in Australian dollar. Whilst I've got the option there to choose US, as I mentioned, if you're going to store it in other currencies, you need to have that selected here. Now I'm only going to offer this to Australian clients. So I'm only going to offer add it as Australian dollar. Now I'm going to hit save. Because I do have other currencies, even though I'm only going to offer it in Australian dollars, that's fine. That activates and says there is a price for this. Now you can start to put that as a folder. So all the other price books are basically just subsets of the standard price book. So here we go. I'm going to go add to price book. So now I'm going to say it's the Australian price book and the currency is Australian dollars because it's only given me that option. Now, if I wanted to add another price book, I'll click on next and give it a second. It's going to ask me the pricing just to make sure, am I happy with the list price? Yes, or I can even add another one. So if you're not aware, price books don't have to be for currencies. They can be for different customer types as well. So I might charge, potentially you might charge government more, or you might charge less to small businesses, or you might have a certain region might cost more to deliver services or goods in that area. So you might change prices based on region. So if I want to add another price book, you can see you've got standard price and you've got Australian dollar, and we're viewing all the price book entries here. Now, if I was going to add one to US dollars. So let's go back here to the product and I'm going to go and say add to price book. And let's just say we want to add to our US price book. If I come here, you can see there's no US option. That's because we have not created the base price for this product in the US currency in our standard price. So it's not available for selection. And this confuses a lot of people. So if you are going to run multiple currencies, at least one version of that product needs to exist in every currency in the standard price book first before it can then be added to a US currency price book. So I hope that makes sense. That is how to add a product and a price. So that way the product and the price are two separate items and you can have multiple prices. Now let's quickly just see how that is actually being used on the operational end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for our test account. Let's try that again. Test. There it is. Okay. So on our test account, there's no orders, opportunities whatsoever here. So what I can do is I can 
and either click or hover over this. So I've got a quick link set up and then you can select new. Alternatively, another way I could do it is click the plus button up here, add a new opportunity, which will have a small screen pop and then I relate it back to this test account. Another way to do it is I could in these quick links here, I've added the place that I could do opportunity. Or another way I go to the related list, which is the full version of these. So these basically just give me a little number and then I can hover or I can go through to this back end here. Now I'm just going to click on new, new opportunity. And this one is a test opportunity. I'm not going to select an amount because I'm just going to say it's going to close today. We're in the needs analysis phase and I don't have to do anything else other than select the currency, which is fine. And then go next. And that's the other thing. If you want to allocate a price book. So now it's asking me to choose a price book. If I was going to add products. So if I can't actually add that US price book because the contact or the account record has Australian dollar on it. So if I want to create, well, one our product isn't in the US dollar price book, but also the account has been associated as an Australian price. And I'll show you that in a second. So I'm going to go to the Australian price book and now it wants to go through and find the products. So we can see here, here is business standard and that is the product that we added a moment ago. So here I can look it up, which I probably shouldn't do. I should go and go to this opportunity again and then let's go to add products. So products, add product. So again, we're at this, this sort of search view. What I need to do is check the box and then I'm going to go next. And in here, I can see I've got options to change the quantity, the price, the date and the line item. And again, these are just opportunity products. So let's just say today they want five licenses. So I'm just going to add five. And then because they want five, I'm going to drop the price a little bit. And we'll say we're going to change the, the, the price value. Let's just say I made that today. So today is when I quoted that price. So maybe if they're taking some time and in six months, time that they've gone, they've taken to make the decision, you can go, all right, well, look, we quoted you that price at that date, but the current price is actually this, or you may choose to keep it the same up to you. And here we'll say gave dollar discount or vultures. Okay, so now when we save that, that's now stored on the record. Now bear in mind that a opportunity product is not the same as an opportunity quote line item. So you can't actually convert. If I create a quote now, that's going to delete. And this is the standard out of the box feature. So quote name is office licenses and we will say the basic information should be there okay so we're going to save that put product we put some some dates on it so now we're on the quote so now we're going to add products to the quote let me just check on that that's pulled in the products by creating the quote I can add additional products here. So let's just say I'm going to add a developer hours, one hour just to set up all the licenses and quantity is one. Okay, save that. And on the quote, we've now got those items. And now I can also see what the other details of the quote were. If I like it, I can hit sync. I can change the ship to, build to, et cetera. So syncing, what that does is it synchronizes it with the CRM. So you know that the record or the quote is ready to go. So that is how to create a, a quote and products and price books. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a PDF. Now you can pretty this up, but the PDF view will uh, basically send your quote line items. You can put a formula field together to deal with the tax, or there are quite often some add-ons and some things in the app exchange, which pull in and, and, and interact with the quote. So you can send that off, get it signed by the customer and then proceed with the deal potentially. So a lot of these items all map together and you know, you've got these stages that you can deal with here, but at least your sales reps can understand how much things cost. They can then start to make decisions or, or add those items to the proposals. They can give them some flexibility in terms of discounts potentially. You can set some rules in there. There are quite a large number of things that you can do with Salesforce. And as I said, syncing allows you, if you've got multiple quotes, to have that one that you are agreeing with so far. So when you go back to the opportunity, you'll see any of those quotes. So if I just go into the list view, we should see our test one there. Yep. And then when we're here, we can see the associated quote, the associated products. If this is a correctly set up account, ideally you would also see all the related contacts, any notes, any stage history on how long it's taken. So obviously as you move people forward, there's more questions and, and answers and things that need to come up. So you can have a lot of control over the process. Anyway, that is creating a product, adding it to a opportunity and seeing how the product price book quote relationship works at a high level. If you have any questions, you can always put something in the comments. Other than that, thank you very much for watching.